Hello, and welcome to Geekdom of God. I'm your host, Sientir, and today I want to talk about heaven. This will be a part one, since there's a lot to talk about. There are a lot of different ideas on what the afterlife will be like. Ideas such as sitting on clouds, playing harps, drunken orgies, epic battles, oneness with the universe, oblivion, eternal torture, etc. When it comes to Christianity specifically, there can also be a lot of confusion. Common tropes, St. Peter as the bouncer at the pearly gates, for example, often don't come directly from the Bible, though the pearly gates totally do, as we'll see later. Anyway, centuries of various influences, such as Dante's fan fiction, can cause a lot of confusion, so I want to go straight to the source, the Bible. This episode is going to focus almost entirely on the description of the New Jerusalem found in Revelation 21. As a heads up, there will be a lot of speculation surrounding the details we do have throughout this miniseries. I invite you all to put on your critical thinking caps and come to your own conclusions. Also, I'm going to focus on the things that are to last forever. There are a few things that happened before then, ideas such as Sheol or the Millennial Reign, that will possibly come up but are their own subjects. Anyway, on Judgment Day, people will be divided into two groups, those going to eternal life in the New Jerusalem, which is the focus of this series, and those going to the Lake of Burning Sulfur, along with the Devil and Death. This day is described in Revelation 20, 11 through 21, 8, and I invite you to read it. I'll include a link in the description below. However, for today, we're more interested in the verses that follow that describe the city in more detail. There is a ton here, stretching from Revelation 21.10 to Revelation 22.5, so let's take this in sections. Also, as a note, the Lamb, with a capital L, refers to Jesus. The passage starts by describing the outside of the city as it has magnificent walls. These are the first things described in Revelation 21.10-14. And he, an angel, carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. While it is grand to behold, I find the most interesting part of this description being the twelve gates and twelve foundations, labeled after the tribes of Israel and Jesus' apostles, respectively. Both are being brought together here, and equated in a way. In this, we see Jews and Christians brought together. Following this, we get measurements for the city in verses 15 to 17. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length. That is about 1,400 miles, or about 2,200 kilometers, and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement. It was 144 cubits thick. That is, about 200 feet, or about 65 meters. I want to take a moment and reflect on how massively huge this is. Ignoring for a moment the idea that this city is 1,400 miles tall, which is ridiculously tall, this city is going to cover 1,960,000 square miles. For context, that's roughly half the number of square miles in Canada, and I mean the entire country. It's slightly more than half of the surface area of the United States of America. It's nearly 1% of the entire surface area of Earth. That is a big city. And that doesn't include any of the height, just raw surface area. What I'm saying is, a lot of people can live there quite comfortably. The passage continues, describing the appearance of the city, in verses 18 to 21. The wall was made of jasper, and the city of pure gold is pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. As a note, many of those gemstone identifications aren't completely certain. Also, here we see the pearly gates, and wow, are those big pearls. This city is going to be sparkling and beautiful. The next section is about the religious state of the city, which is described in Revelation 21, 22-27. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of the Lord gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is a pure city, lit by the glory of God, a city in which the fullness of God can dwell. 
I should take a moment to highlight just how significant God's glory being the light of the city is. In Exodus 34, 29-30, we get an account of what Moses looked like after speaking with God. The text reads, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant and they were afraid to come near him. The level of personal interaction with God that Moses had left Moses' face literally shining, which freaked people out. Therefore, God's glory is more than capable of illuminating this massive city. And that's all the time I have for today. There's a lot more to talk about, including a few final details of the city, as well as more information about what we will be like when we inhabit it. There will also be references pulled from places other than Revelation. Though, as this episode is made clear, the book of Revelation has a lot of detail about the location in which we will live forever. Thank you for listening. Until next time, everyone, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this week's Geekdom of God podcast. To support this program, go to patreon.com slash cntier. For more, you can visit geekdomofgod.com. Finally, you can email cntier at cntier at geekdomofgod.com.